Mass Effect Andromeda is the new upcoming installment of the Mass Effect franchise, and many of us fans are dying to find out more about the game during the wait. So to help you with that, here are 9 gameplay changes you need to know about Mass Effect Andromeda. In the Mass Effect trilogy, the only melee weapons at your disposal were your Omni Blade, Elbows, and other various multiplayer weapons. That being said, 9 times out of 10, you're more likely to shoot down your enemies than go face to face with them. This was due to the fact that melee weapons were not your primary weapon, nor a powerful one throughout the entire trilogy. However, in Mass Effect Andromeda, melee weapons are now a key part of combat, completely changing the battlefield and offering the option of making any melee weapon of your preference your primary weapon. You will be able to craft a variety of melee weapons, supposedly with endless possibilities such as Krogan style hammers, futuristic swords, or katanas. Melee weapons will have a dedicated inventory slot and will not take away your primary or secondary firearm slots. Personally, I'd be rolling through the battlefield with my space katana and slicing my way through the battlefield. Instead of Mass Effect 2's planet resource hunting minigame, which got boring over time, Bioware has completely 180'd things up. The planets we will be able to physically explore to our own free will are categorized as types. And I don't mean what kind of planet it appears to be, like visually, in fact apparently it's quite the opposite. For example, some planets will be labeled as story planets, which will feature open exploration and the main quest line, including side quests, while another planet type could be geared towards towards dynamic multiplayer, such as defending, attacking, or perhaps vault hunting. Of course, there surely has to be more planet types on the list, but none as of right now have yet to be confirmed. I gotta say though, I'm really digging the whole open exploration side of Mass Effect Andromeda. In the Mass Effect trilogy, once you have chosen your class, such as Vanguard, and created your character, you no longer have the option to change your class abilities for literally the whole Mass Effect trilogy, assuming you imported your character from Mass Effect 1 all the way to 3. Of course, on PC, there's a couple of programs that can help you with that. That being said, for Mass Effect Andromeda, that's no longer the case, and for a good reason. Throughout any period within the game, you can go on the pause menu and swap your class abilities for another one, which seems to suggest that certain scenarios might require a different approach. However, this will not be the same for multiplayer, which sounds fair. Instead of responding to character dialogues with a good, bad, or neutral response, Bioware has decided to make some major changes. Instead of a good or bad response, you now have the option to respond with head, totally not a sexual window window, casual, heart, and professional. Head will lean more towards logic, professional will likely lean more towards get the job done precisely kind of response, uh, don't quote me on that. Casual will more likely be your neutral response, and heart will be more of your personal feelings type of response. So does this mean I don't have the option to kick a guy out of the window of a skyscraper anymore? So yes, although number 5 and number 8 seem to be a confusing topic to talk about, they do hold their own unique differences to be considered their own number. Because Mass Effect Andromeda is huge about player exploration, there will be planets that are uniquely different from each other. This is where planet types are introduced. You could visit an Earth-like planet, volcanically active planet, ice-cold planet, and several other types of planets. The important part about planet types are the effects it has on gameplay. Some planets might not be habitable at all, and if you were to explore it, you would need specific suit upgrades or perhaps armor to effectively do so. Toxins, environmental pressure, atmosphere, gravity, and temperature will affect your ability to traverse through certain planet types. You no longer have to press a button to launch or lean towards cover. Now, whether this is a good thing is highly debatable, but depending on where you're going and how close you are from cover, the game will automatically launch or lean you towards cover based off the assumption you're next to cover in the first place. This is where things get complicated because I'm sure this new change might also bring a new plate of annoyance or irritation if the player did not want to take cover in the first place. Apparently the cover mechanics will be similar to that of Metal Gear Solid 5, The Last of Us, and the latest Tomb Raider. I just hope that if I'm next to a steep cliff, the game won't assume that I wanted to commit suicide and automatically jump off the cliff for me. 
I guess there's one benefit to signing your soul to EA, and that's having several different development teams under the same roof. Or at least I think so. But yeah, even though the designing of the Nomad or Mako doesn't sound like a gameplay change, believe me, it is. The physics of the new drivable Nomad was designed by the guys behind Need for Speed, and when it comes to vehicles, I don't doubt their work. The Nomad will be the first time in forever of being able to tear up that dirt like you used to be able to do with the hilarious Mako from Mass Effect 1. Except this time, the physics will probably be more realistic. Well, let's hope not. First off, being able to jet boost in midair and shoot at the same time is a completely new feature to the Mass Effect franchise. That alone should be a number of its own on this list, but it would be too short, kind of like the short amount of time it took me to biotic charge you in midair. Yes, it seems like you can tie in a few moves and class abilities while in midair too, which is also additionally satisfying. Yes. To top this off, you can also switch shoulder angles, whether you enjoy the angle or for when you want tactical advantage in certain scenarios. Hell yeah, nothing is more satisfying than fighting through waves of enemies with your friends, and it seems like it will be fairly similar to Mass Effect 3. Now, what major changes or differences from Mass Effect 3 is the real question, let alone if multiplayer feeds back into the main storyline like in Mass Effect 3. And now for the greed part you were probably curious about. So it sounds like EA still got their hands wrapped around Bioware's neck, as microtransactions will be present in Mass Effect Andromeda. You know the crates you could buy if you had enough in-game currency or credits? Yeah, basically you can buy those crates using real life currency or microtransaction if you really want to feed this corporate beast. And so there you go, that was 9 game changes you need to know about Mass Effect Andromeda. I'm sure this list can be extended in the near future when more confirmed information or gameplay footage is available. But for now, what do you think about these new changes to the franchise? Do you like them? Or perhaps you have mixed feelings about them? Let me know in the comments below, and if you have any questions, also let me know in the comments below. This video has been provided to you by yours truly, The Proper Bloke. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit that like button, it really does motivate me. And if you really want to join in on the fun, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to officially get notified when I upload a new video. Thanks guys and gals, and hopefully I'll be seeing you on the next one.